Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm super excited because I'm gonna continue and do another video in Magic Leap. This video is basically gonna be based on something that I've been experimenting with and that is cloth. So what I wanna do is I wanna be able to touch a component which is gonna be a sphere and then be able to affect it by using my hands. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna put a spheres in both of my hands and as I'm moving my hands, the spheres are gonna be attaching to my hands if I move my hand against another sphere, what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna attach a component that is called a cloth component, and I'm gonna be affecting the physics on that other component. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're gonna be doing in this video. The, the first thing that I wanna show you is I set up this new project. It's called the Magic Leap Hand Tracking, and I'm gonna be putting this in GitHub just like I do with every other project. So my goal is to have many different examples of how to use your hands with Magic Leap. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to show you the setup, which is basically, you know, just a plain scene and have a main camera and directional light. We're going to be replacing that with, you know, what Magic Leap normally offers. And I'm going to go into the Magic Leap folder, examples. And if you didn't watch any of my videos previously to this one, make sure that you pull, you know, if you have my project, you can see the setup, but if you wanna, if you wonder how you get this Magic Leap folder in the project, you can go into the package manager and then make sure that you download the, pack, the Magic Leap Unity package. I'm using the latest version. So once you do that, you'll be able to click on open folder and then basically double click on the Unity package and bring it in. Once, once you bring it in, it'll basically create this folder and this is what, Magic Leap provides as far as like how you communicate with your ML1 from Unity. So what I'm going to do is I like to borrow code. I don't like to create things from scratch unless I really need to. And Magic Leap already did a lot of the work for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the hand tracking and I'm going to copy the content and then also the rendering game object. And we're going to go back into our scenes and this is going to be hand cloth. And in here, I'm gonna remove the main camera and directional light, and we're basically gonna copy their implementation. So I'm not gonna be doing this. Their implementation basically is a different example, and for what we need, we're not gonna need to, we're gonna be, we're gonna need to track your hands, but we don't need these different icons. So I'm gonna go into gestures and basically remove everything. I'm also going to, I'm gonna leave the head pose canvas because I want to see the percentage of confidence as I, you know, as I'm tracking a pose. And let's see, everything else here looks fine. Then in the content, this is the hand tracking example. We can use the hand tracking example that they have. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be bringing in one that I created on a previous video. So I'm just going to remove this one for now. And then I think, and then we'll call this one we can call this one hand tracking controller. Excellent, and the hand visualizer, it's fine, except we're getting a little a weird color, and the reason for that is because I'm using the low way rendering pipeline. Let me also make this a little smaller. Let me fix that. Okay, so look at the material, and what I'm gonna do for that material is I'm going to create, let's go ahead and create a new material and we can just call it default and and that's what we're going to be assigning to now that we create a new material it's going to use the proper rendering pipeline so let's go back into here and then just drag and drop i think if we if that doesn't work we can just do it on the game object that always works looks like that one worked and then let's do the same thing on the other one oops say cancel and make sure that you select the center there we go and we can just change the colors i think we could do something like, I don't know, red, so that we know that that is the point that is. So what this is, if you don't know what the hand visualizer is, is basically gonna put uh, a sphere on every, basically every part of your hand. There are different key points in your hand that this is tracking. So we could go in and check it out pretty quickly so you can see what this is doing. So what it's gonna do if, if we started tracking the hands, which is what this is doing, then it will grab the position of the key points and for every key point on the pinky hand it's basically going to associate the position of that to the position of the pinky finger so if we go and look at the pinky finger 
you'll see that it's gonna, let me just go in and, these are all the transformations. Let me see where we're actually creating. Uh, I haven't looked at these for a while. Oh, I see what it's doing. So, so what it's gonna do is for each key point, so you, for example, the pinky has multiple key points. So as it's looping through each key point, it's going to go in and basically create a primitive, which is gonna be a sphere, and then basically store that sphere in this new object, and I believe. And then what it does, it basically modifies the color to the color that we set as an overlay. So the color that you're setting up here in the inspector is gonna be the color that is set on the key point that this is creating as a sphere. So this is more of a visualization script. We're gonna leave it because I really like to I really like to see it. And so the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new controller. So let's go ahead and create a new folder. This one is gonna be, oh, it looks like we already have a script folder, so we don't need to create a new folder. So see it's escape. All right, and I'm gonna be bringing in a couple of things here because I use those for a lot of my projects. So I'm just gonna call one core and then we can even call create one called controllers or managers. Let's see, we can just call it controllers, it's fine. And in the controller folder, I'm gonna copy, let me go ahead and copy the uh, core class that I use for a lot of the stuff that I do. So let me just copy these from my other screen. Then we're gonna go into core here and just create a new C sharp folder, C sharp script. And then this one's just gonna be called mono behavior, mono behavior singleton. And I apologize if I'm typing incorrectly because I'm looking at the other screen. And then let me just go ahead and move that back to scripts. Okay, let me just move it to core. There we go. And, and now let's just go ahead and, and open it up. And what we're gonna do here, let me just clone, let me just copy the entire file. There we go. And then we don't need, we don't need the name space. We could, we could just call it what it is, magic lib, hand tracking, asset scripts, and then core. I think that's fine, that works. Okay, so this is basically just so that I can create singletons for the stuff that we are coding. And then I'm gonna copy another one which is gonna be the hand tracking controller. This one is gonna have to be modified because of you know the what we're gonna be doing in this video. So I'm just gonna copy the one that I have here, go into controllers, let's create a new class. And like I said, this is gonna be the get hand tracking controller.cs. All right, now that we have that, let's see where that actually put it. Looks like you put it under assets. Oh, I put it under core. And I don't see it in there. Let's go into Unity. And let's see where I actually saved it. So we have controllers, core. Just type in controller. And tracking controller. So where did I put it? So it looks like we never saved it. So, okay, let's just do it one more time. So I'm just gonna right click here, new class, and oh, I see what I see what we did run. Let's go ahead and do a new file, and then in the new file, I'll just call I'll just call it hand tracking controller. That's CS. There we go. So I don't know which file we modify. We we will just do a git status to see what files we change. Okay, so now here, what I'll do is I'll just modify the script a little bit, then. Let's see, we need to bring in the new using statement for our singleton, which is this piece, and then I think this is fine. So the text to display on the gesture status, I think that's fine. We are okay with this. And let's see, for, so what I'm gonna do is say, I don't really wanna track a specific key pose. We could just say, or maybe, maybe we could. I'm just thinking like if we should do a face. Let me see what we have available here. So if I do, let's just go ahead and just gonna remove all that. Or maybe just comment it out. I'm just gonna comment that part out and then also this part out. 
let me just close out of this for a minute and I'm just going to click on sometimes I have to click on assets and the open c -sharp project so that IntelliSense gets loaded into VS Code okay so now we shouldn't have any any warnings or anything like that okay excellent so so what I want to do is I want to the, the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to be able to, to put to clone the sphere that I'm going to be creating and then as I move my hand then it's going to attach that sphere to my hand so if I do ML, ML hands and then let's say that we want to track we want to see if the left hand is getting you know is getting track which in this case we got we got to check for the key post confidence and that is something that I that I set up over here so right now the key post confidence value it's 0 0.6 so that means that if the confidence if the system thinks that I'm about 60% confidence that you know I'm tracking a fizz then in that case I'm going to say it's going to get into this basically if statement and it's going to say okay yeah we are tracking a fizz otherwise it's not tracking a fizz so so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do the open hand in this example I'm just going to do the fist so let me go into my other example and see what I did on the other one so on the other on the other example I did before I did an extension class let's do that as well so on this one just going to create a let's create a new folder and this folder is just going to be called extensions and then we're going to create a new file this one is also going to be called key post extension and this is a very simple basically a, a very simple static class that extend some of the functionality and I'm just gonna say okay I'm just gonna work with the face so what this is doing is extending the ML hand key pose and anytime the key pose equals to fist then we're gonna return true if that key pose doesn't equal to that then we're gonna return false so that's gonna basically allow us to do things like this so if my left hand is doing a fist then this is gonna be true and then we can also check the, the key post confidence if it's you know greater than or equal to 60 percent we're going to say that this is true the same thing with the basically the other hand so it's going to be for my left hand and my right hand so uh, we don't need we don't need any of this because this was for the other example okay so i think we have i think we have mostly what we need i still want to do this on the status i think this is fine because it's going to show us which hand gesture we're tracking and then the confidence so before we keep going let's go back into unity there's one thing that i need to change in the hand tracking controller and that is what kind of what kind of poses i'm going to be tracking and this is tracking multiple and to be honest let's just leave them all on so that i can see you know what the system is doing when we release this if we release this for an application you know something that is going to really release in the magic leap then you want to just constrain it to the ones that you really need for now i think i think we can do them all i think that's fine so let's go back into into here so the other thing that i'm going to need is i'm going to need to basically place a couple of spheres around you know around my hand and to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new let's create a new serialized property this one is going to be private and then we're going to say game object and this is going to be a sphere we could either we can even do use a basic sphere that where we use a primitive and i'm just thinking if we should do if we should do that i think we should do that i don't think i need i want to control how it looks I, I don't i don't think i really care and let's go ahead and just let's just do this left sphere left hand sphere And then we're also going to do one for the right hand. Right hand sphere. Okay, excellent. So that's going to be that's going to be dynamically created and we don't need to do we don't need to serialize it. And yeah, we don't need to serialize it. Let's let's just keep going. And then what I'm going to do is as soon as I as soon as I do the fist and as long as I'm tracking, I'm going to be creating I'm going to be creating the sphere. So let's go ahead and just create it here and we're just going to call create spheres for my hands just a comment and and then what I'll do is I'll just call the I'll just do game object 
that create primitive. And then the primitive is going to have a primitive type. And primitive type. And this one's just going to be a simple sphere. Excellent. And we'll do the same thing with the right hand sphere. Let's just create two. But the only time where we're going to be creating this, it's going to be when we're tracking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if left hand sphere is not null, then we're going to go ahead and create it. So I'll just move the comma in there, and then we'll just do this. So this is going to happen just once, and then we'll do the same thing with the other one. I'm just going to duplicate those lines, and then we'll just say right hand sphere. And I promise this is going to be cool as we as we get further. Okay, so we have that, we created it, and then the the other thing that we need to do is we need to place the spheres on my hands, so or on your hands. So what you're gonna do is we need to also set the position of the sphere. So we're just gonna say transform that position. And the position of it, it's gonna be ML hands. And then if we're doing, for instance, if we're doing left, we want to we want to use the left one. And let's go ahead and, oops, let me just go ahead and look at some of these values. And I believe the one that we need to use, it's going to be, I'm trying to remember if it was the normalized center, the middle. Let's go ahead and try, let's go ahead and try the center. And I believe the center is already a, ve a ve let's see, a vector three. Yep, and it is a vector three. Let's try this. If it doesn't work, then We'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and change it, and we could we could go in and read the documentation. But to be honest, I'm I'm lazy when it comes to documentation. I like to try things before I read anything. Okay, and we can we can just clean this up, and we can in fact just move this into into its own meta. So we'll just do another private private, and this one's gonna be create spheres. Let's call it create hand spheres. And we'll just put that there just to fix a little bit of the indentation. And then we'll just do then we'll just do that. Okay, so perfect. And we have that method there. Okay, excellent. So so now that we have that, so we should have a spheres credit here if they're not null. If they're not null, it's going to create them. Otherwise, it's going to use the, the ones that already exist and then change its position. OK, so this, this looks fairly simple. And to be honest, before we test, before we do anything, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and just call this on the awake and then go back into Unity. And let's see play and see what happens. And let's see. And oh, okay, so it's disabling. And we haven't attached the. We need to attach the controller. So let's go ahead and say hand tracking controller. We also need to associate the status text. And we don't need this because this was for my other example. That's the mute text. Okay, so we can remove that piece. We can remove that piece, and I think everything else is good. And then, then let's associate the text status with the with the text the status text component. So I'm just gonna do that. Okay, I think we need to fix an issue that I that I just noticed that we had. We also need to check, make sure change this to equal equal null because if it's null, that's when we want to create it. That's why they're not getting created. So let's go back into Unity and hit play. And let's see what happens now. And we should now see two different spheres created. And we can see them on the bottom. So what I'll do is let's change the name of them. So I'm going to do left hand and then name. And this one's going to be land hand sphere. And we can just say the same thing for the one below, except it's going to be right. Okay. So that we know what we're what we're looking at when, when it comes to the hierarchy. Okay, we'll just do that there, and then change this to capital R. All right, so I think I think that it's gonna work just fine. And then, so we know that this is working fine. So we can just remove that from the awake, 
and and then you know as soon as we create it if it equal to null we'll create it and then otherwise we won't create it we'll use the existing ones and then grab the position of the left hand center and also the right hand center and then i think that should work okay so i think i think we're good there as far as the sphere creation and also the updates of the position so now what i want to do is i want to focus on the on the fun part which is cloth so let me go ahead and let me look at the head pose okay so make sure that we we're good there let me go ahead and play one more time just to make sure the canvas is set up right as well okay so i think okay so we're we're good there and then we have the sphere the sphere that you see right there it's for the individual parts of your hand so that's fine the the other thing that we need to do that i haven't done is we need to create a new folder here this one is going to be for the to be able to get privileges on the lumin platform to access the hand tracking gestures so we're going to add a plugin so it's basically going to be similar to what we're doing on the examples so magic leap is doing plugins okay so it has to be plural so let's go ahead and do plugins and then we'll need a folder called lumin so let's go ahead and go back to ours and then create a new folder this one is going to be lumin and then we'll need a manifest file i'm just going to go ahead and copy that manifest file that we have in here and then we'll just go ahead and drag it and drop it into into our new directory so just go ahead and drop it in right right on that one and then we'll just there we go and then we'll just drop it in here okay we'll just rename it okay excellent and then make sure that we don't have we do have the other copy so we can remove that one so we should have one on each folder and it looks like we do so if you haven't looked at this file this is basically what allows you to access different parts of the magic leap hardware so if you want to access for instance the media player if you want to access the internet if you want to access the screens provider so there's different things that you need access to if you're developing an experience in magic leap so this file is going to allow you to do that so make sure that you you look at it and you look at the documentation to you know find out what privileges you need in order for your experience to work so if i didn't do that basically we wouldn't be able to do any hand tracking because we're not asking for that privilege so and in fact if i look at let me let me just go over that pretty quickly so if you look at the gesture config hand tracking the the privilege that we need is the gesture config so and also the gesture basically the gesture subscribe and config I don't know if we need both but for this example i'm adding basically privileges to everything but just keep in mind that these are the two that you might need to look at in order for for us to get access to the hand tracking all right so now that, that it's created now we can focus on the what i said before the fun part which is working with cloth okay so now that we have that then we're going to be focusing on the content so on the content side, what I'm going to do is, so if we hit play, you'll see where the camera is going to land. And if we put, if we land the camera, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some content right over here. So when we start the Magic Leap experience, I'm going to basically see a big sphere. And that sphere is the one that we're going to be interacting with. And what I'm going to do is, as I move my hands, we're going to be pushing against that sphere and what i'm hoping to happen is that the cloth component is going to simulate cloth physics so let's see if that's going to work so i'm going to create a new 3d object and then it's going to be a sphere and it's going to be huge of course we're going to do let's do 0 0.2 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 and we can do there you go something like that and i think if we do 0 0 there you go 0 0 0 and then we can just offset it and we can hit play let me just let me just make sure that i have the right there we go so we want to do we want to put it somewhere where we can see it so it's going to be somewhere like here and i think i think we can keep it point two so let's see let's just put it right over here and in fact we could probably do multiple let's just start with one so we'll just do this location 0.52 so we just stop the game from playing and let's just do it one more time okay perfect so this one is going to be the one that we're interacting with so 
we can call it main sphere. And let me just type it. There we go. Type it correctly. Okay. So for this one, we're going to have to attach a component. And that component, it's going to be cloth. So to do that, we're going to go into, you could do it through, through the component. Let's go ahead and click on a component here. And I'm just going to say cloth. And to be honest, I haven't tested this on Magic Leap, so that's what makes this fun. Because I, you know, I, I tested it on a regular Unity game, which was running on iOS, but I haven't done it in Magic Leap yet. So if you haven't watched the video about cloth, make sure that you watch it, because it's really, I think it's interesting. Not because I created it, because the technology is really cool. So, so what I'm going to do is make sure that you watch that. If you, if you watch that already, you know what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be, for now, I'm just going to be disabling gravity. And if I do this, you can see what's going to happen as soon as I hit play. And if we get close, so it's really hard to see what's happening because we don't have anything interacting with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another component. And this is going to be temporarily because we're going to be removing this. And this is just going to be a, a regular sphere. We can just say, for now, we can just say that this is our left hand sphere. And I think all of that looks good. And then what we'll do is on the sphere colliders, we'll just say there's one sphere collider. That sphere collider is going to be this sphere. So now what we can do is, and then this one, make sure that our new sphere is smaller. I think otherwise we won't be able to see, we won't be able to see anything. So I'm just going to make that one a lot smaller, it's smaller than our other one. And then let's just set this 0, 0, and I'm just going to put it right here. Let's go ahead and hit play. Let's see if we can get this working right off the bat. And all right, I think that, OK, there we go. So that, that works really cool. But it's moving, and, and it, just, it just looks strange. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and go back in here. So, so it's cool that it's, that it's moving, and, and I think for a prototype, it's fine. But you you may want to make some changes to it. Let, let's keep it like this, and then we'll make some changes after. Because I may want to constrain some of the positions so that it doesn't move to the nowhere. And let's let's leave it like this, and then we'll test it. So what I need to do, though, I need to you know dynamically be able to set these two. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these two a size of 2. And for now, I'm going to just go ahead and set it to nothing. And I haven't done this, but we're going to do this programmatically, where we're going to be setting the first element to be you know, the left hemisphere, and then the second element to be the right hemisphere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this. And, and now that we're doing this, I'm, I'm kind of leaning more towards creating a prefab. And then that way, we don't have to do that through the code. But let's see, let's see if we can do it all through code. And then if not, we'll just do it through you know, creating a prefab and having that in the hierarchy. OK, so now that we have this, we'll need to get access to, let's see, we'll need to get access to the main sphere. So let's go ahead and create a new, a new script here. This one is going to be, let's go ahead and add it here. And this one is going to be, we can name it. Let's see, we can say, we can call it simple main simple cloth component or simple cloth controller. Since we're naming things controller, let's go ahead and name this one as well. And I'm just going to move it into our controllers folder. This one was part of the lightweight rendering pipeline, so I'm not going to worry about that one. OK, so now that we have that, I think that should be good. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is on this controller, I'm going to create a new variable. And I can make it a singleton, but I don't want to make it a singleton because I might want to have multiple of them. So for now, I'm just going to say, let's just let's just do one. And this one is going to be the, the let's see, what do we name it? Let's go back and simple cloth controller. So simple cloth controller is going to be here. And this one is going to be simple. Okay, so let's just do that. And this one is going to be serializable because we're going to be attaching that through the inspector. Let's go back in here. And I apologize about the mistakes. It's 
It's 12.48 a.m. and I tend to make a lot of mistakes at this time. <laughs> so, all right, so now, now what I can do is I'm just gonna, let's go ahead and go back here. I need to attach this first. So this is gonna be simple cloth controller. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna rename this to simple cloth controller. Let's keep this simple so that we, we can get the demo going. And then we'll extend it on another video. All right, so we have that and we have this as well excellent okay excellent so so what i want to do is when this gets loaded i want to get a reference to the cloth and so what i can do here is let's go ahead and go down here and this is going to be important for when i'm when i'm checking for nulls so let's go ahead and do let's go ahead and do this so just thinking if i should do it Let's go ahead and do it here. Let's go to our simple cloth controller. And I'm going to say private, and then this one is going to be cloth, cloth component. So it's going to be, and then when the, when the game starts, this is when I'm going to do the association. So I'm just going to say cloth, and then get component, cloth, excellent. So then the other thing that I'll do is I'm gonna add, and I'm making I'm making this up. This might change as we as we do we do this. So I know that this is gonna have the left hand and then right hand. So we can say attach hands, and then we can pass in the game object, and this is gonna be left hand, and then game object, and then it's gonna be right hand. And if you remember, this wasn't basically the game object that we wanted to attach. It was the collider that we needed to attach. So we could get, we could use the game object, or we could basically just use the, the collider itself. I can just do it this way, and then we can change it. So we can say a sphere collider, left hand, a sphere, a sphere collider, and then we can just say left hand, drag a component. And then we're gonna grab the sphere collider for, for that game object, and then we'll do the same thing with the right hand. And we'll do the same thing here. So now that we have those two attached, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say cloth and then a sphere collider. So if you remember there was there was a property about this. And right now, let's see, this one is okay, so it's an array, so we need to say we need to tell it how big it's gonna be. So, and it takes an array of cloth sphere, there we go, cloth sphere collider pairs. So, let's see if we do new cloth sphere collider pairs. This is gonna be two, and then what we'll do is we'll say that index zero, it's going to be this guy, and I think this is first, yeah, I need to do that, and then index one it's gonna be the right hand and I don't know if this is gonna work but it looks it looks okay to me so far so we're basically telling it that we're gonna have two cloth sphere collider pairs and then on the first item just like we did through the inspector we're associating the sphere collider from the left hand that we're passing in and then also the one for the right hand okay so I think I think this is good then let's do this let's do this on the awake and we can remove, we can basically remove this. And I think all of this should be okay. Okay, so we're good there. And then what I'll do is I'll do the association on the star method. And let's see what we have going on in here. So we're calling these when we are trying to determine. Okay, so forget about what I said. Let's do it right here. <laughs> So at that point, like if we go back into the implementation, the awake is going to get the cloth component. And then we need to attach the hands. We can attach the hands as soon as we are detecting the one of these spheres. So we could say we could either do it here, we could do it here as well, or we can say you know as soon as we call this method, we want to do it. So we can we can do it as soon as we call this method. But I'm going to do it at the bottom because at that point is when that's going to be created. So I'm just going to say you know the the simple cloth controller so it's going to say simple cloth controller attach hands and then here we're going to say left hand 
left hand sphere, and then we're gonna say right hand sphere. Right hand sphere. Excellent. Okay. So I think all of that should work. And before we can test it, I could test it by going into, let's see, if we do it on the awake, you gotta remember, like if I do it on the awake, this is, let's go to the simple cloth controller. This is happening on the awake. So you wanna make sure that you're, you're careful about the life cycle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do what I just removed. I'm gonna do it on the star and this is just gonna be for testing. So for testing, I'm just gonna call this from here. Excellent, and we can go ahead and go back into Unity. And if we did everything right, we should be able to, we should be able to hit play and it should create two different spheres for us. And the spheres are huge and I'm glad that we're doing this because we need to change the size. Yep, they're, they're just way too big. Okay, so if you look at the size of the, of the one that we created here, which is our simple cloth controller, this was 0.2. Let's go ahead and do let's go ahead and do point one on these ones. So I'm gonna adjust, let's see, we can create a new variable here. And we can just say float and then size of hands. And then we can say point one, point one f, and we can we can expose it as a serializable field too. Okay, so I think that's good. And then on the size of hands, I'm going to I'm gonna say left hand sphere, transform, and then we just say local scale equal new, vector, and then we just say that's gonna be the same for all three axes. And then I'll do the same thing here, but we'll change the, there we go. So that gives us, that, that will make it a lot smaller. Okay, so now let's go ahead and hit play, see what happens. And we have, there we go. So now we have them in here, which is perfect. So now I wanna see if the simple cloth controller got the information correctly. And it looks like it didn't get the information correctly. So let me see, because if I try to collide with it, it's not gonna know, because it's not aware. It's not aware of what this one is just yet. So let's see, get cloth component sphere colliders and then these ones right here have a sphere collider so that should work so let me go ahead and check attach hands so this is what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna put a breakpoint right here and let's go ahead and debug it let's go in here and this is one one of the cool features about VS Code and I guess you can use basically Visual Studio as well so I'm just gonna attach the debugger Close out of here, hit play. I'm gonna put a breakpoint right here. Make sure that that is getting called. I think I just need a coffee at this point. <laughs> All right, so now we, we can see that we have the left hand and the right hand. So let's go ahead and step into. And let's see, I wasn't able to step into it. Let's see, did I get an exception? And that's probably because I never associated the simple cloth controller. I think that's what it is. Let's go, let's go back into Unity. Hit play to stop it. And let me make sure that I, yeah, I didn't do, I didn't associate the simple cloth controller script with the, the serializable field. So now, now that should work. All right, so now let's test it and see if that works. I'm gonna hit play. And okay, so it looks like we're running. We are only getting this error because we're not running on the device just yet. And let me make sure that the simple cloth controller had the information that it needed. And looks like it didn't get the information that it needed. So we're just going to, we're just gonna have to debug it one more time. And this is normal. And let's go ahead and hit play. All right, let's go ahead and hit play one more time to play the game and we can debug it. All right, let's see if simple cloth controller, so simple cloth controller is set. And this is says so we should be able to step into it. Now what I'm gonna do is let's let me, let me make sure that I can get that I did get the collider. I did get the collider just fine. And I also 
Let me step over that. And I also got this other sphere collider. Then on this guy, looks like I already had, oh, because I already set him, I already set the array to have two. Then this is already initialized, but let's see if I step over. And then I do, there we go. So that's still no. And then this guy is still no. And let me see, let me make sure that this is still. So let me look at these two. Okay, so for some reason it did not set. Let me see what the first type is. There might be a. So I'm just gonna stop it. And this is a sphere collider, which we did associate. Interesting. So let's go ahead and let's go back here and on the simple controller, I'm going to change the size to be zero. Okay, let's make sure that I hit play so that I don't, okay. So set it to zero. And then this guy is gonna, we're gonna be changing the size of the array to be two. And then we'll say, you know, we'll attach the first element for the first collider to this sphere collider. And then we'll do the same thing. Okay, let's see if this works. It should work. And it looks like we changed the value of the array, but it didn't like it didn't like that we pass in the sphere collider ourselves. So let me see. So if I do it through, and this is one of the things that you know you might want to do this through the inspector to avoid issues like this. So if I do that, that works, which is really interesting because that's exactly what we're doing. And then we're also doing that there. Okay, so this is first, interesting, and then right hand. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and I know I know of a better way to do this than the way that we're doing it. So what I'm gonna do is instead of creating these dynamically, I'm going to create them through the inspector, and then we'll be able to associate it ourselves. Okay, so let's do that and in that case we won't we won't really need to do this it'll just happen automatically so we'll just do this pretty quickly let's go in and create so i'm just gonna clone i'm just gonna clone this one this is just gonna be left hand and we can just call this one right hand and remember that we set into point one point one and then point one and then this one these ones won't have a skin mesh render and it won't have they won't have a simple controller and let's see let me make sure let me make sure let's go ahead and create a new one okay let's just go ahead and create a new one like this and then that way we just have the core components that we need so it's going to be left hand and then right hand Excellent. I think everything everything else is fine here. And then what I'll do is associate the left hand with the left hand sphere and then right hand with the right hand sphere. And then we'll change the size to be 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1. So now that we're doing that through inspector, we should be able to get rid of a lot of code. And so we have that piece there. And then the other cool thing is we, we can actually set this to manually ourselves so we don't have to have that other code. Uh, with, with, to be honest, it should have worked, but but it's fine. We'll we'll make this work, okay? And and then we don't really need we don't really need to create anything anymore here. So what I'm gonna do is just basically get rid of this entire method, and then we can just attach. We can just call the attach hands right there. In fact, we can do it right after we associate the the position. And then here I can just run this so that I can test it. This is just a one-liner, so I can do it as a, as a lambda. Okay, so let's see. Let's go back in here and make sure that we make sure that we're fine. We don't have any errors. Okay, and 
and in fact we can set these ones to be a zero 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 let's go ahead and hit play and let's see what happens okay excellent let's go into the left hand and let's go ahead and get close and it looks like we're not getting close oh in interesting oh that's because let me go let's go back to attach hands so so the cool thing is we don't need to do this anymore because we were using this to get uh, the association happening we could get rid of the simple cloth controller but what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna I'm just gonna keep it just in case we want to do some things through script but I'm gonna get re I'm gonna remove the other method and we in fact we don't need to do this anymore and we don't need to do this anymore because the left hand is going to be the hand tracking controller knows about those so as long as the cloth is aware of them then we should be fine which they which it is because we associate him through the inspector let's go ahead and he see play to stop it okay let's try one more time and hit play and see if we can collide now with the cloth component and looks like we can now which is great there we go and there we go okay let's go ahead and go back here okay so it looks like we have let's just move these ones up and cloth can be cloth can be all the way in the very bottom so we have hand tracking left hand right hand and then the visualizers okay so i think i'm gonna make these two a little smaller let's do 0.05 there we go, let's go ahead and run it. And there we go. And okay, there we go. So and then I'll I'll assign a new material to the hands so that we can we know that that's for the hands. So let's go ahead get and create a new material. We can just say hands, hand, and then we can add another one to maybe we call it the target which is basically the simple cloth controller so it's going to be target cloth and this one we can we can associate it with the simple cloth controller and the hands with each hand and now let's go into a hand and let's see what color we like to pick and I'm going to do something like I don't know we can do we can do a blue we can do we can probably just do like an orange something that comes out it stands out and then for the simple cloth controller I want to do something different so let's see maybe we can probably let's just do maybe a, an orange but dark like close to red something like that works okay so I think I think that's fine we get rid of the gizmos okay excellent so now if we go in and hit play and let's see okay we're good we're running now what i'm going to do let me offset this guy offset this guy a tiny bit and there we go and then let me move both of them just to make sure that they both can uh, that's there you go that's pretty cool they can both interact with the so the other thing that I, I just don't like it going and flying around. So let, let's do some changes on the cloth on this guy. And for this one, I'm just going to paint. There we go. I'm just going to change the size of. And this is going to be interesting because this because of the scale in augmented reality. The dots are just huge. And let's see if we can see if we can change to see the brush radius let's try let's try that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the max distance to be zero only on the components that i'm selecting and let's see let me go back through and this probably needs to be okay that's too big okay i think that it's going to work i'm just going to I'm just going to paint couple even though it's kind of hard to see because it's just so small and okay so we'll just do that one and then maybe one here 
and maybe maybe one maybe one over here. So the fixes are gonna look strange. Let's see if these there we go. And then let, I think I selected too many from the top. Let me change this to be a bigger number. Okay, so I can deselect it and then I can say now let me go back to a lower number and then this one's gonna be zero. Okay, I just want to select just one point from the top and then one from each side. Okay, so I think this is gonna work. Now we can go up, back out and we can hit play and see. Let's see what the simulation gives us. Oh, and we also need to make sure that we check gravity because we're now constraining those points. And this is looking weird. <laughs> yep, that is not looking right. So let's go ahead and play. And what I'll do is let's go back into paint mode. And let me see. I wish there was a way to to change the point, you know, how big they are. And I don't believe there is a way here that I know. So let's see. We can change the solver. Okay, that's fine. We'll just we'll just paint a couple more points. So we'll just do maybe one here, one here, and this is so that we can keep them in, keep it in place. One here. You'll see how this looks as soon as we get more points painted. Wonder if I go to wireframe. No, nope, that doesn't make it any better. And we'll just paint just a couple there couple here, maybe some in there, okay, so let's see, maybe some there, some there, okay, let's see what happens with the simulation now, and we're still getting, let's see the bank, oh there we go, big increment, I think that's the maximum value for those two, so we're going to need to pin a little bit more on this side or we can leave it let's go ahead and paint a little bit more on this side so hopefully this is making more sense as I'm having to troubleshoot it so we'll paint some there and then maybe some here basically where we don't have any red that's where I want to paint it and some here okay excellent so now let's go ahead and hit play see what how the simulation looks There we go. So now what I'm going to do, oh, and I forgot to set this to a 1. So let's make sure that the bending stiffness is set to 1 so that it doesn't, so that the physics look a little bit different. It's more rigid. There we go. Now we can go ahead and grab one of the hands and then, and see, let me see how that is reacting. So it's basically getting in. And so I think I like the other effect better where I didn't have points that were constrained, but I think I think this gives us flexibility as far as like if I get close to it and I want to see how it reacts. Let's see. I can do Yeah, I think I think this works for now. So let's do let's do another one where we so I can get a couple so that we have and that's the, that's the beauty about doing it with the way that I'm doing it now. I can add, you know, if I wanted to add another one, let's say that that one had, that one is going to be on a side. So I can say, okay, I want to offset it. This one can be maybe right here. And, and in this one, I could say, you know, I honestly, I don't want to paint. Let me make sure that I, let's see. So that's this one right here. And on this one, okay, I see. Let me just have said, let's put it on the other side. Okay. And I believe you can, huh, it's interesting. There's like a bug going on because the, it still thinks that I'm on that other, on, a, on that other place. So let's go ahead and go back. Okay, there we go. 
it's okay we'll paint it we'll paint it right here and what, what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna I'm gonna remove all the painting that we did let's go ahead and do 0 0.1 and I'll just remove all the different vertices that I selected previously because I want this one to to be able to move okay so I'll just remove there we go and on this one I'm just gonna remove physics remove the gravity and I think I can now I can just uncheck that and hit play and now the both left hand and right hand should interact with either of them we could in fact make this one a different color so that we know that this is the one that doesn't have gravity on so let's see what happens so if I get close to that one that one is affecting that one if I get close to this one this one is moving which is what I wanted to what I wanted to do excellent okay let's see let me see if I can increment some of these some of these diff so the friction I can let's try let's try one on this one and see on damping and see what we get and let me go ahead and select the left hand there we go so I want the damping to be very high because I don't want the gravity to there we go that's what that's what I wanted so now when I get close to that and I start moving it around I'm going to be able to deform it which is really really cool okay so that one it's going to be okay so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and create another material for this one so we know that that's a different one so we could say target cloth uh, this one can be with and on that one we had gravity so we can say with gravity and then we can add another material and then without gravity okay and this one it's gonna be the one with without gravity so we can just name it as so and then we can say gravity gravity with gravity without gravity okay so let's just be consistent so let me name this one without gravity okay and then so this one should have the without gravity and then this one with gravity okay now what I can do is I can you know say this one is gonna be maybe this is green or maybe a blue I think a blue will look cool awesome so now we have two different ones that are reacting a little bit different so what if we had a third one where we we didn't have gravity so let's go ahead and yeah let's go ahead and do the same thing so I'm just going to on that one I'm gonna put it on the other side and this one it's going to be a little similar to this one so it's gonna be very similar to the one with gravity so I'm just gonna go ahead and select that and then we can just say this is weight gravity weight gravity uh, falling and we're just gonna copy just copy this with gravity falling and we can associate that with this other material and this one we can make it maybe a light blue will work okay so I think, I think we're good so so what I'm gonna do on this one I want to let me see I have points painted on this one and let me make sure make sure that everything is clear looks like everything is clear okay so what I want to do is I want to set the max distance on some of those points so let's do 0 0.01 but I'm just gonna set it maybe one one at the top let's just do one at the top and see how that feels if I hit play there we go I want I want that one to to react a little bit different as far as the gravity and then if we change this to maybe a value of zero and then something like that maybe that's too maybe that's too much let's do one and zero so it's gonna be zero and excellent the other thing that I want to do is let's increment the the solver frequency to be double so that we get more realistic deformations 
Okay, so that, see that's making this one look a lot better because the solver is running more frequently. And now if I do, okay, and then this one, if I go, there we go, that one is looking really cool. I like how this one is reacting. And then this last one, let's see how that would react if I touch it. Yep, be more of a curtain, you know, that you're hanging. You wanted to see how it would react with, you know, with the cloth component. Okay, so I think I, I think I'm good with as far as like the setup here. And let's see now on my canvas. I don't think I need to do anything special. So let's go ahead and try this on the. I'm gonna build this on the magic leap, and then I'll show you how it actually looks. All right, guys. So let me show you what we have going on in here. So I got the three different spheres that have a cloth component associated with them. I, I can also, you know, get clothes and they really don't look, the one on the right hand side is the one that has basically just one point attached as a constraint. But the other thing that I can do too is I can basically do a fist. And I have a little bit of jittery, I think I need to fix that. But the, the, the spheres are basically getting repositioned as I'm moving basically moving my hand. The other cool thing is I can, you know, as I'm moving around, they're moving with me. I can also modify, you know, get close to it. And you can kind of see that I am changing the, this is super cool. I can do the same thing with this one. I can, re I can basically say, okay, I want to make it more of a sphere. I can use this one to get it in. And I can basically just deform it as I, as I go around, which is super cool. This one, I can kind of do the same thing too. If I wanted to get close. And I'm gonna be experimenting with this. I don't know what the possibilities are just yet, but all I know is like looking really cool. The other thing I can do on this one is I can do the same thing. I can just move, let's see, just basically cloth, which is really, really cool. I can do something like this. And I can modify some of the physics to be able to change how they're reacting. So, so this is basically everything that I wanted to show you. All right guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also be sure to check out gamedev.net. They have amazing resources for game developers, also amazing forums and a great community. Also find me in Patreon where I'm posting these videos as well. And I'm also posting early access to the source code all the projects that I'm doing on the videos, I'm posting there basically a couple of days in advance. So be sure to check me out there and support me if you can. Thank you guys.